Okay, if you haven't already lowered your cinch, you need to do it at this point because it's going to give you more room to put the cinch spreaders in. So notice again, there are the two holes here. When you started out, you were on this hole and now you've moved it down so that on the top hole so that it makes the cinch, it gives you more room. It's, it's looser in there. So now I'm going to take the first spreader. I'm going to take the side with the teeth. I'm going to put it underneath. Okay, and I've already marked the middle of the fray of the cinch. This is my middle mark. And because I'm going to start on one end and work over, and I'm going to do a one and a half inch wide bar, I've marked it. So I've gone up three quarters of an inch here and I've marked three quarters of an inch with my middle here. And so first of all, I'm going to take these and I'm going to spread these out and start that you do it. One, two, you do the top and the bottom, uh, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, at that point, now we're going to double. So we're going to Put two together, top and bottom, 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 two together, for I think eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. <clears throat> and so then you've got six cords left. And now you had five up here, but you'll have six here. So you're going to single it out. And you're going to go, um, actually, you can start down here and do it. You can put it here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here. And then here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so then you need to kind of go back and, and readjust these. So what you want is you're going to be wrapping two together for eight rows and single on the end. And I'm going to push that right where I'm going to be starting. And so I'm going to take this top piece and it's flat. And what we'll do is we'll just take it and we'll put the rubber bands around it. Now you get two of the cinch spreaders. Some people only like to use one. Um, when I had my student do it, I usually have the two on there. It makes it easier for him and it holds it in place. Takes less finger effort by using these cinch spreaders than if you don't use one at all. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back and count and make sure that I've got one, two, three, four, five, and then these two together, you wanna keep positioning them so they're one on top of the other. And so this is really important when you start to do your cross weave. <coughs> because they'll tend to want to slide off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three, okay. Okay, so now I place the second spreaders and I move them down a ways out from the middle and made sure that they were all equal. So at this point, you want to, again, go through and make sure that all the way through, all the way through, that these all match up and they're correct. Again, five singles, eight doubles, and six singles. And I have my middle mark right here, and I'm going to make a bar that's one and a half inches wide. So I've measured back and set my spreader. And then I will be adding these D-rings, but I won't add those until I've gone down 
two rows. I'll go down and back, and then on the third row, I will add my D-ring. For one and a half inches wide, I have allowed 20 feet. Now, it may be different for you. Everybody weaves differently, but that's what it takes for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. I'm starting my cross weave. That is shown in the How to Braid book or else if you've done the 17 strand and had the DVD, then you'll know how to do this. So I'm going to start off and go down. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to stay close to my, um, my spreader here. So I'll go down and come back and turn around and come down and add the D-ring. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so here I am. I've gone ahead and gone back and forth and finished the whole thing. And all the while, I left the spreaders on, but you can, after you've done a few rows, remove your spreaders. But the reason that you want to start with it, it makes your line straight. And I can't emphasize enough that when you're going and, and closing these, that you concentrate and make sure that you're always getting the top and the bottom one the top and the bottom, the ones, because it's really easy to start mixing up. Actually, I did that on one row, messed up. So you have to really pay attention that you're always picking up the correct ones. And so, um, go ahead and, and take this off. And the reason that I started not in the middle is because I only end up with two ends to bury. If I would have done half and half, then I would have had four ends to bury. And you can do it that way too, but I like to have less work. So now at this point, I can go back and do designs if I don't want to make some colors come off here. But this is just a, a real basic, it gets your D-ring stabilized and it spreads it out to make the roper cinch. So here is the final cinch. There's my bar. It's one and a half inches wide. Again, I allowed 20 feet. On the average, it takes about 12 feet for one inch across this. That's using my technique. You may take more or less. I went ahead and did the cross weaving here. It's not shown in the book. But basically, after I had completed this, I went back and I just wove across, and then I allowed two feet of extra cord to wrap around through there. And here's where my ends come out, and then I'll just snip those. So when I did that, I made sure that they were pretty even. And I guess you could say that's a true roper cinch. Mm -hmm.